started. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. And today I want to talk about narcissists, recognizing a narcissist, how narcissists manipulate you, um, how they try to fool people in the beginning and the things that a lot of narcissists do. Okay. Now, the thing you have to remember is there's all different types of narcissists out there. Okay. And there's different degrees of narcissism. You have covert narcissists, you have overt narcissists, you have, you know, malignant narcissists. So there's a whole realm of different types of narcissists out there. But what I'm going to talk about is really recognizing a narcissist and recognizing the manipulation. A lot of times the manip manipulation that they use, they also use gaslighting. Okay. And I'm sure everybody's heard that term a thousand times. Oh, gaslighting, gaslighting. I'm going to go into kind of some examples of what this, you know, how they operate. Be the reason that this is important is because when you're out there, you've got to be able to recognize these people, okay? Because if you don't, what a narcissist does is they will get you into their web, all right? They know exactly how to maneuver and target their victims, all right? And what a narcissist does is they're going to look for people that are vulnerable. They're not going to look for the person that has the high boundaries, the person that, you know, is going to have a lot of self-worth and self-confidence or something like that. They're going to target somebody that they can manipulate or somebody that has a very good heart or wears a heart on their sleeve. That's why a lot of times you see with these you know, toxic relationships or a relationship with a narcissist, you have the narcissist and then a lot of times you have the empath. That's somebody that, you know, has a lot of feeling and the a lot of times the empath thinks that the narcissist, you know, has the same type of emotions and feelings as they do and they don't. So that's why they never get it. That's why I'm here. I'm going to try to educate you guys to recognize these signs so that you could be aware of it when you're out there because there's a lot of people that don't understand narcissism or narcissists. I mean, now it's a new big phrase that everybody's using, but I'm going to be, you know, giving you guys examples of how these people operate. Okay. So let me just start off by this. All right. When you meet a narcissist, all right. And I'm talking in general. It doesn't go for every single narcissist out there. All right. When you meet a narcissist, one of the key ways that a narcissist is going to operate is they're going to move fast in the relationship. They're going to love bomb you. They're going to say, I love you within the first month, the first week even, and they're going to move really fast. Why do they move fast? Because they don't want you to be able to recognize them for their true authentic self. They want to try to fool you. Okay. And this is the goal of the narcissist in the beginning is to try to fool you. That's when they have the mask on. That's when they're so charming, okay? And what is the tool of the narcissist? Charm, okay? Charm. And what you have to keep in mind is just because somebody's charming doesn't mean they're a narcissist, but it's when somebody is overly charming. In other words, when it seems too good to be true, then guess what? It is, okay? And you've got to trust your gut when you get that feeling with somebody because nobody is that nice in the beginning when they don't know anything about you, all right? So you've got to question that and you've got to say to yourself, why is this person going out of their way for me or being extra about it? Why are they being extra about it with the charm and the compliments and trying to build you up and everything like that? This is what they do, okay? Why? Because they're trying to hook you. Their goal is to hook you fast. This is what they're trying to do, okay? So they're going to be very charming. They're going to try to hook you. They're going to try to manipulate you. Now, 
How does the narcissist try to manipulate you? What they try to do is they mirror you. What does that mean? That means that they're going in the beginning, they're going to shower you with a lot of attention. You're going to get the calls. You're going to get the texts. They're going to be on the phone with you for hours. And you're going to say to yourself, wow, whew, wow, I found a real one here. You know, I, I'm out there and I'm dating and everything. And, you know, these other people, you're lucky if they even call you back or they follow up with you. See, a narcissist, the way a narcissist fools you in the beginning is that they, they're consistent. Most of the times they're consistent, you guys, because they're going to portray to you that they're so into you. So they've, they are the actors, okay? These are the actors out there that are going to try to portray to you that, you know, you are special and that they are that good guy, or if it's the other way around, that good woman, because it can go both ways, male and female, all right? So in the beginning, you're going to think to yourself, oh, I found somebody who's authentic. I found somebody who like really seems like they're into me. You know, they're calling, we're, we're talking on the phone, they're opening up to me in the beginning. Now, here's another sign that you guys have to be aware of. In the beginning, a narcissist will put on the Academy Award of acting. What they'll do is they're going to open up to you and they're going to, to maybe show you some vulnerability. They're going to tell you things, you know, that are very, um, personal in their lives or something they went through in their life. They'll tell you something like, you're the only person I told that to. Why, why are they doing that? Because they want to make you feel like you're special. But not only that, the reason that they're doing that is because by them trying to open up a little bit to you and tell you personal things about themselves, they're, that is their way of getting you to open up to them. Okay, and this is exactly what they want. They want you to open up to them. Why? So that they can find out what your vulnerabilities are and what your weaknesses are. Now, a lot of people say, well, why is that important? Why are they so concerned about, you know, my vulnerabilities and my weaknesses? Because that, you guys, that is what they're going to use later on to break you down. Because the way it goes um, in the beginning is you have the love bombing, okay? And then you have the de devalue, where they devalue you, okay? That's where they're going to start to criticize you and put you down and give you backhanded compliments, okay? And that usually happens after they feel they've hooked you, okay? Or they've gotten all the supply out of you, all right? They're going to start to devalue you. And what are they going to do? The most personal thing that you told them in the beginning, maybe you're self-conscious about your weight. Maybe you're self-conscious about your family. Maybe you're self-conscious about anything in your life, okay? And you've opened yourself and told this person within the first three months your vulnerabilities and your weaknesses and the relationship has moved fast and you're thinking that you could trust this person because they opened up to you. Big mistake. Big mistake, you guys. All right. You, you know, you don't open up to people until you know them a while. Okay. At least, at least three months and longer. Okay. Because you don't know who this person is. People put on a false persona in the beginning, and then you see the true, authentic self. But why is that? Because they can't keep the act up. Remember what I tell you a thousand times in all my podcasts. They can't keep the act up. It's too much work. So the true, authentic self is going to come out because that is their true character, all right? They get tired of putting on the act. So eventually that mask is going to start to come off. 
it'll come off maybe in two months, three months. It depends, you know, it depends on you and it depends on if you're able to recognize the red flags and it depends on the type of narc you're dealing with. So this is how all of this transpires. All right. So they're going to mirror you and they're going to, you know, have you open up. Then you're going to open up and you're going to tell them these personal things and all of that. Okay. This is how it goes. And like I said, the biggest mistake that you do when you're dating or something like that, or you're starting with, it doesn't even have to be somebody you're dating. It could just be any kind of relationship. It could be a friendship relationship. It could be uh, somebody that you work with. The biggest mistake you do is opening up too fast, too soon till you know who this person is, okay? Because if you get entangled with a narc, they will try to use this later on on you, okay? So they're going to love bomb you. Then, you know, they're going to try to mirror you. And the reason that they mirror you, you guys, is because what they're trying to do is they're trying to paint that picture that they are the perfect guy or the perfect woman for you. Okay. This is what they're trying to do. And a lot of them use, you know, religion. They'll say, Oh, I'm so into God. I prayed to God so many times. I would find the woman, my, I would find my future wife. And, and then here you came along. I know that God brought you into my life. Okay. Some of these con men will do that or con women. They will do that, you guys. So don't be fooled by this, all right? Don't be fooled by anything. What do I always what do I always tell you? Time is your defense against these these narcissistic fake people, okay? And what does a narcissist narcissist hate? They hate when you take your time. They hate when you slow the relationship down, okay? That's why when it moves fast, it dies out fast. This happens all the time in relationships, all right? You know, the best relationships are ones that are built over a period of time. You build a relationship, okay? You don't just snap your fingers and have a relationship overnight. You've got to see what that person is about. Their ins and outs. They're good, they're bad. When they're mad, when they're happy, when they're sad. How do they deal with financial problems? How do they deal with family problems? How do they deal with their children? How do they deal with your children? These are all things that give you insight into who that person is, okay? And the narcissist is is the one that is trying to win you over quickly, okay? Now, a lot of narcissists out there, not all, but a lot of them are opportunists and they move fast too because they're trying to get something out of you. What do we talk about all the time? Oh, there's so many users out there. There's so many users out there. Well, the narcissist is a user. The narcissist, in a lot of cases, not all, but a lot of cases, a narcissist is going to try to use you for some kind of benefit, okay? It could be for sex. It could be for money. It could be for a place to live. They're going to want to move in with you within the first three months, okay? Red flag, red flag. You're dealing with somebody that is a narc that is trying to move fast and get some kind of benefit out of you. You're not dealing with an authentic person, okay? You're dealing with the mask. So they're going to love bomb you and tell you everything you want to hear, they're going to have your head on cloud fucking nine. And you're going to think that, you know, God has brought this wonderful man or wonderful woman into your life and all your prayers have been answered. No. Okay. I'm going to say it again. No. How long do you know them? One month, two months, three months? No. That's not enough time, all right, to make any kind of moves or anything like that. And w one of the things I need to tell you, when you want to protect yourself from a narc or a con man or a con woman, okay, is that you don't give these people money. You don't do, you don't give them any kind of benefit like that. You know, 
trust is earned over a period of time. And that brings me to my next point. Another point that I need to bring out about narcissists is a narcissist in the beginning is going to try to earn your trust very quickly. All right. This is what they're trying to do. You guys, they want, they want to hook you. They want to hook you. They see something in you that they want. All right. And it's not love. They're not with you because they love you. They're with you because you got something that they want. All right. Maybe it's a financial benefit. Maybe you have a successful business. Maybe they think that they get with you and you're going to back them for a business and the two of you will have a business in a year. Oh, uh, you know, we could build something in a year. Anybody talks about any kind of business thing with you in the first three months, six months or anything like that, that is a huge red flag. You're dealing with somebody that may be trying to use you uh, they think, you know, they're going to use you as a stepping stone for them to, you know, eat off the fat of the land. OK, so this is this is you don't do business with people like that. You don't have people move into your house like that. OK, no, no and no. All right. And this is your defense against these narcissistic con men and con women. Now people will say, well, a narc really is somebody who doesn't have empathy. Right. A narc does not have empathy. All right. They don't feel the way you feel. They're not wired the way you're wired. Okay. They, they have a grand, well, if we talk about, you know, a grandiose type of narc or an overt narc, they have a, you know, this enormous sense of ego, all right? They feel entitled, like they're entitled to things, not that they have to work for them. They're entitled to them. So that's why a lot of them will try to get with you because they feel entitled. You are, you know, an opportunity for them to step it up, all right? And these are, these people are dangerous, all right? And when I say dangerous, I mean dangerous in the sense that they will bleed you dry financially, okay? Or they will use you or something like that. This is why, and I'm going to repeat it again, time is your defense. What is your defense against these people? Time and boundaries. And what does that mean? That means you have to be able to say no, OK, and these people will try to break you down. They will try to break you the fuck down. All right. Believe me when I tell you, they will try every which way to make you feel guilty. OK, another thing that a lot of them do. All right. Is in the beginning, they make do a lot for you, try to help you out with something around your house, try to be really nice to your kids, you know, overly nice. Watch those people that are overly nice to your kids. You shouldn't even bring anybody around your kids for at least six months to a year until you know who these people are because they could be pedophiles and they are out there. But the other thing is they're going to do everything to seem like, wow, oh my God, oh, this is a great guy or this is a great woman. Look how they're, you know, helping out around the house or look how they're being so nice to my kids or, you know, look how they, you know, helped me, you know, offering suggestions with my business and everything like that. Or they may try to buy you gifts. In the beginning, they may be buying you little gifts or something like that. And you're saying to yourself, oh, well, you know, if they're spending money, they've got to be a real one. No. Not necessarily, you guys. This is what I'm telling you. Because a narcissist will do things like that for the greater benefit that they're going to get out of you. And this is what a lot of narcissists do too. They will spend money in the beginning, but then they won't spend money later on. This is to hook you, all right? And after they do that, then what they try to do is make you feel guilty because they did something. They did whatever they did, the little things that they did for you. And then they're going to throw it up in your face like, you know, I've done everything for you. I've done every, I've gone out of my way. I've done everything for you. Okay. This is the guilt trip that they put on you so that you feel obligated because later on, 
that's where the that's where they're going to get you because later on is when they're going to come and they're going to say, uh, you know, could you help me out with this business here? You know, could you loan me some money or, you know, do you think you can, you know, let me move into your place or something like that? You know, I've always been there for you. I would do that for you. You know, I would do that for you. You saw I was there for you. Don't be fooled by that. Okay. Don't be fooled by that. You do not owe anybody anything and you don't make major moves like that until you know somebody a long time, okay? A long time. Look at how people get loans from banks, right? It takes a, you have to have a good credit rating to get a, a substantial loan from a bank, all right? Or let's say you want to lease a car. You've got to have decent credit or a decent background. So here is this person that's coming up to you and, okay, they've done little things for you. And now you're going to feel obligated to do for them when you've, you haven't known this person a long time? No, you guys, no. And this is another reason why they move those relationships quickly, all right? You've got to be careful of this stuff. So that's how it goes, you know, the love bombing then the devaluation after they hook you, and then the discard. Either they're going to discard you because they got bored of you and they had somebody else lined up on the side that you didn't know about, or you're going to discard them because you, you caught on to their game and you realize that, you know what, this person wasn't who I thought it was. This person was fooling me the whole time, all right? So this is why I'm bringing up these red flags to make you guys aware, okay? Now, I'm going to do another podcast on gaslighting, you know, common things that narcissists do with gaslighting, you know, after the discard, what happens, and all other little facts that will help you guys to recognize these kind of things. And a lot of people have been through it, and they understand. I, I you know, I've, I get a lot of people that reach out to me, and they're like, I, I went through that, I went that, I went that. Because here's the thing, narcissists are very predictable, all right? They're very predictable. They follow a pattern, okay? Now, a lot of people say to me, well, why, what makes somebody a narcissist? You know, why are they a narcissist? A lot, there's two reasons usually somebody is a narcissist, okay? Either they were the golden child in their childhood, okay? Or they were somebody that might have gone through emotional or physical abuse in their childhood and they felt like they didn't have control in their childhood. And that's why later on, they have this need for control, okay? And what are they gonna control? They're gonna control their relationship. They're gonna control you. They're gonna control their kids. They're gonna control their employees if they're a boss. They're gonna control other people in their life because they have that thirst, that need to have control. Okay, this is what you got to remember with these people. All right, it's all about control. And the way they control you in the relationship is by putting you down, by devaluing you. Because a narcissist will never look at you as th their equal. You are always inferior to them. Okay, they don't want to see you do better than them. Because deep down, what you have there is an insecure person. You have a fragile ego, all right? And when you deal with people that have fragile egos, okay, these are the people you have to watch out for because they're jealous. They're not going to want to see you do well. And that's another way that a narc tries to fool you in the beginning. In the beginning, a narc will be your biggest cheerleader, Okay, they will, you know, be like, yeah, you know, they'll support you and have your back everywhere. But that's not their true authentic self. And how do you know that? Because at the end of the relationship, they're cutting you down in every way. And the reason that people have such a hard time 
of getting over the narcissistic abuse is because they're focusing in on the beginning of the relationship. They're focusing in on how wonderful that person was or the things that that person did that was very nice, that touched their heart. And if you're somebody who wears your heart on a sleeve or you're an empath or you have a lot of, you know, you're a type of person that that has, you know, you have a heart, you have feelings, okay? You're going to think about these things and it's going to it's going to hurt you later on because now you're seeing a totally different person. But that totally different person at the end of the relationship is who that person was from the beginning. This is what you've got to understand. And this is why you've got to educate yourself on narcissists and who they are and what they're about and how they operate and how they gaslight you and they're not transparent. You ask them a question and they don't give you a straightforward answer. They dodge the answer. They tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. That is classic gaslighting. I don't know what you're talking about or I don't remember or you don't remember that right, okay? Deny, deny, deny. This is what they do. Or what they'll do with gaslighting is they'll deflect. They'll bring up some other topic to throw your your mind off and cause confusion in your brain. They start talking about something totally different. Go off on a tangent to the point where you forgot what you even said to them or asked them in the beginning. And that's the whole goal of the narcissist, to create confusion in your brain, to create self-doubt of yourself. This is how these narcissists break you down, okay? That's why, you know, I'm doing podcasting. I podcast about a lot of the game and the games that go on. It's to build up people's self-worth so that they don't become a target for these people. They recognize who they are so that they don't deal with these people. How do you deal with a narcissist? You don't deal with them, okay? You're not going to fix these people, all right? You're not going to fix these people because they don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. Or if they do, they're going to justify it in their mind that they're justified in what they're doing, okay? They take no accountability and they flip the blame on you. This is what they do. And it's up to you. It's up to you. I'm telling you now, it's up to you to recognize them. And when you recognize them, you don't get involved in the mess. You don't go back and forth with them and start arguing with them because that's what they want. They want to upset you. They want to get you hyped up. Don't do it. Don't give them the fucking satisfaction. What you do is you disengage from toxic You step back from it and you say to yourself, if this person can't be transparent, then I'm not dealing with this person, okay? I'm stepping back, all right? So this is just a little, you know, um, give you guys a little synopsis of narcissists, how they operate, you know, in the beginning, when you're meeting people, when you're dating them or anything like that. So I hope that helps you guys. If it does, please hit the subscribe button. Please share, share, share the podcast. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it and have a great day. Are you having a problem in your dating or relationship life and you need a question answered? Well, go to my website. The link is in the podcast description and you'll see how you can ask Yaz a question and get it answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description and look for the link where it talks about how Yaz will answer your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I wanna tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? 
check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to make you aware that the Game Exposed podcast now has their merchandise available. You can check out the link in the podcast description. There's hoodies, there's sweatpants, there's t-shirts, there's cool hats. So go check it out. Link is in the podcast description. And follow Yaz on Instagram at dating underscore advice underscore Yaz.